Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I'm stuck. So, um, I am actually mentally stuck, and this has been occurring to me recently as I have a new problem. And so I would like to talk to you guys a little bit about how I get unstuck here. So the first piece of this is just taking a break and stepping away from what you are doing. And this goes against every corporate structure, every dynamic. And I always seem like the crazy person who's not working. I know everywhere I go. And yet I come up with pretty interesting and creative solutions here. And so often I will completely break all of my work, all of my quant thinking, and I will go and I will do something. Like I will go into the garden and I will water for the day here. So I need to water because it's quite hot in Texas. This is one of the things I absolutely love doing is just spending time outside, listening to the birds, also the cars driving behind my house, uh, and the airplanes going overhead. And of course there are bugs and birds and things moving around and I can see the plants and feel the water and just enjoy the environment around you here. Um, quants, I think constantly about my job, my problems. You cannot be an actual quant and solve very complex problems by just ch checking in, you know, your nine to five at your office job here. That is not how quant finance works if you're solving really complex problems. Now, let's take a step back and not forget, we are paid to build models and often we are building simple models and we use the exact same framework we've been using and we follow industry best practices and industry standards here. I get it, I get it. It's kind of monotonous, it can be boring at times, but you have to really think and dive deep. That's what makes great modelers. And when you get to these sorts of problems where you get stuck, uh, the first thing I like to do, as I mentioned, is just break out of that framework here. Don't think, don't work, uh, don't do quant things. You need to do something that is non-quantitative in general. Um, so I will break from this and I will just do things that are non-quant. And this seems very odd, I'm at you know, two o'clock in the afternoon and I'm taking some sort of, you know. 20, 30 minute break to do something that is not quant related. And yeah, sometimes I do simple things like, you know, play on my Switch here. I'm playing Tears of the Kingdom currently. But at the same time, uh, often you need to do things that are completely separated. I get all the way out of the office, all the way out of my computer, the people around me. I need no contact, no interaction. I need a solid, complete break to really just do nothingness. And then you can come back and actually try to solve this problem. Now, the second piece of advice is just look online. So I know maybe you've already done this uh, at the beginning here when you start to get stuck. Um, looking online is great. It is extremely dangerous as well, but looking online is a great resource and the fact that it will kind of spark your, your thought process, your memory maybe somewhat, and you can look to see if somebody else has solved a very similar problem here. Uh, now, the internet is fraught with issues because the majority of stuff on the internet is just garbage and it, it's not correct and it misleads you into incorrect trains of thought often. And so I kind of put a little asterisk here for new quants. Uh, the internet is not great and genius and it knows everything. The internet is full of stupid people just like the real world. Uh, and often their solution might actually be correct in their one scenario, but often most, most of the stuff we see online is a quick, dirty, how do I do something? How do I code something? There's not a lot of deep intellectual thought on here, but it is great place to start here, looking for digital resources here. So again, when I worked in a big bank and I worked in SaaS and I had issues with modeling or putting pieces together, uh, often I'd go into the SaaS documentation because I trust SaaS and I would read through that here. Uh, if you go to my website as well, I have a list of free resources, which I trust. Um, I start to go through these as well. I start to look at them. I'll look at forms as well, but just because a form says this is true or this is not true or you should do it this way does not mean that's correct. You need to really think through that process here. And then the third step here, if you still are stuck, is going to be asking a colleague here. Now, if you work at a big institution with a bunch of other quants, uh, the first two steps are mandatory because I don't wanna just be bugging people with annoying, stupid little questions. Often I don't know, and then I look online or I, you know, think about it for a little while, like, ah, that makes complete sense. That is what I need to do. And I'm an idiot. And I completely forgot that I was supposed to do it this way. And this is exactly why. And then I'll make a note of it as well. So I don't forget. Um, but before you ask a colleague, make sure you do the first two steps, then ask a colleague here. So I had a colleague at one of the institutions who was a good 20 years ahead of me, uh, career wise, they knew all the intricate details of what we were working on in the credit space. Um, they were amazing to talk to. Um, again, now, if you work at a small firm, do not go ask people outside of your firm, especially if these sorts of things are somewhat proprietary. So 
in my case, when I am stuck here. Uh, I cannot go anywhere. There are not people I can go and ask the questions to. I mean, I could call up my old colleague uh, and, you know, explain what's going on. But at the end of the day, I don't do that because now we start to have a conflict of interest where, you know, I'm getting advice from them and I have to explain the problem in great detail and depth. And really now I'm sharing corporate information with someone outside of the company here. So huge advantage at large firms. There are lots of people around. Again, there are geniuses, there are mediocre average people. But at the end of the day, right, you can talk to different people and kind of get an idea. And sometimes even you'll talk to a friend of yours at your firm and they'll say, you know what, go talk to so-and-so. And they'll give you those leads to get to the person to help you kind of break that sticking point uh, in your theory and kind of model development here. And then finally, the last piece here, what I actually have to do because I can't go to colleagues and stuff is going to be looking at textbooks, which is completely different um, than your colleague piece, but it's kind of the same as one and three. I go and I find these simplistic textbooks. Do not find an advanced textbook. Uh, I actually go out and find a simple one. So I am working in probability space right now with disjointed sets where essentially the probabilities need to sum, um, but they are not actually drawn from the same area. So there are some conceptual issues with this. Uh, so this book, and it's not my favorite book because I've mentioned it, it's mediocre. It's Probability and Statistical Inference. Uh, this is by Hogg and Tannis. It's a generic book. It's a super simple, like undergrad introductory book here. And my problem is far more complex and it's far more theoretical, but I find it actually extremely helpful to find a very simple textbook uh, and start to read through these sorts of things because often, there is some tiny little nuanced detail in the basic theory that you have forgotten or missed or you've assumed. And so when you go back through and you read these things, this is actually what's jarred my memory and fixed it. And this, this actually did solve part of my problem with where I was stuck. So this is absolutely amazing. Start with simple textbooks. I always like to have a few on hand just to read. I know, again, for those that are managing quants, this seems completely irrelevant. Like, Demetri, why are you reading a you know undergrad level introduction to probability book here, you're trying to do models and development and, you know, you need to go off and do what we're paying you to do. Um, this piece though is absolutely critical. This is what breaks my memory often is just reading the most simplistic books. Now, if that doesn't work, um, start to go up a little bit more and measure here. So again, this one's a little, little more rigorous here. Uh, this is my measure theory and probability theory. Um, again, it's by Athrea and Lahiri, I believe, that's how you pronounce it. Um, but it is more of an advanced textbook. It has more mathematics. It's more proof driven. Um, there are more definitions. Again, reading these sorts of simple, basic books will really help you out. But I tend to like to read a few chapters of the basic book. And then I go back to step one and I take a break and I think about it in greater depth because I'm being paid to think here. And I think about the problem and I think about the issues. And one of the things I just cannot figure out with junior quants is I have to write everything down. I always have a pencil and I have a whiteboard marker and I have a little miniature whiteboard next to me and I write and I write and I write. And as I'm developing the new office here out in the shop, uh, I'm going to have spaces to write because I feel like I'm one of those you know crazy people in the movies like A Beautiful Mind with John Nash. And you know he's writing out on the glass uh, the math and taking notes. I draw pictures and I put the equation and I sit and look at it and I think about it. And I think, what is wrong with this, this problem here? What is the key issue I'm trying to solve? And trying to boil down uh, the key issue here, the sticking points within this theory or this ideology or what you're trying to do here is absolutely critical. So I like to write and think. I don't know how people do it without doing it. So that is how I break myself out of these quant issues here. Again, we're solving new, interesting, complex problems. I'm sure there's probably somebody else who's done it in the industry somewhere, um, but we're not solving, you know, problems that are gonna be found in a generic textbook or like your, I don't know, like a generic quant finance book. They just don't cover these sorts of things in this sort of depth here. You need a, a specialist book to get into it. And then even then, I, I find out as I talk to people in the industry over time, um, a lot of what we do is just unique and different. And so being able to think clearly and go through these steps uh, will make you a lot better quant. It'll help you think more clearly and deeply and you will kind of progress from the you know junior quant, which is just going through the motions and doing math uh, into the intellectual quant, which is kind of the stopping the intuitive piece of now you really understand the inner workings of this and you can draw new conclusions and do kind of new methodologies uh, much faster here. So those are my four steps for unsticking as a quant. 
not getting out of those sticky spots here and finding the breakthrough that you need uh, to solve the problem you're working on. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time. Mm -hmm.